So back in June when patch 1.17 brought us New Game Plus, I did a video comparing all the new legendary weapons to the originals and shared my New Game Plus legendary upgrade resource spreadsheet. I'll link that video down below, but now that we've all had some time with these new weapons, I want to run you guys through my ultimate New Game Plus loadout. We'll cover all the weapons and outfits I use on the regular, including all the coils and weaves. Plus, we'll discuss some alternate weapons and outfits you might want to consider. Now, just a quick disclaimer, of course there's no single best loadout I can recommend for everyone. The best loadout for you is going to depend on your playstyle and which weapons you enjoy the most. That's what's cool about Forbidden West though, we have a lot of cool weapon choices which gives us some great options for changing things up. With that said, let's dive in. Let's start with the 6 weapons that usually live on my weapon wheel. First up, we have the Sun Scourge Hunter Bow. As I'm sure you guys know, this is by far the best elemental bow and arguably the strongest elemental weapon in the entire game. In particular, it's easily the best frost weapon, which is a super important element, but I also use the acid arrows fairly often. I coil my Sun Scourge with 3 frost coils and 2 overdraw coils, which both give a 15% boost. But the overdraw ones will boost all of the elemental arrows, so we can get some extra acid and fire damage and build up without sacrificing maximum frost. Now you can only get two of those overdraw coils each playthrough, one from Thornmarsh and one from Cauldron Gemini. If you only have one right now, then I just put on another frost coil. Or you could simply do five frost coils if you want to save the overdraw coils for another weapon. My next mainstay is the new Tears of the Land God Hunter Bow, which has taken place of my Death Seeker. I use the TLG for its advanced hunter arrows, which deal some insane tear damage and occasionally the very strong advanced purge water arrows. The TLG gets coiled with two 25% component tear coils, a blue 50 15% components hair coil and two 15% overdraw damage coils. I have those second two overdraw coils from my first New Game Plus playthrough. Now, that coil set might be a bit surprising to some of you, but my main use for the TLG and the DSS before it is really for component removal. Hunter bows aren't great for dealing impact damage, and this is especially apparent on Ultra Hard, so I think it's best to use other weapons for damage output and make the TLG as strong as possible for tearing off components, which it's already good at. Once I finish my current New Game Plus, I'll have another purple component tear coil to replace the blue one. Now, if you want a bit more versatility, then agility and concentration damage coils are a great choice. They'll boost all damage types including impact, tear, and the purge water arrows, elemental damage, and buildup. And yes, there is a 15% concentration coil, but it's very tricky to get. You'll have to loot it from a scorcher super fast before a cutscene plays during the What Was Lost side quest with Catalo. Pretty much everyone missed that on their first playthrough, so make sure you get it in your new game plus. The blue 10% versions of the agility, concentration, and overdraw coils are are good options as well. By the way, I'll have some resources down in the description for you to find all these coils I'm talking about. And if you guys enjoy these types of gear videos, definitely leave a like down below so I know you want to see more content like this. Plus, as you guys know, it really helps out the channel. So since we're not using a hunter bow to deal impact damage, we need some weapons with high damage output. For me, one of these is the Blast Forge Bolt Blaster. I know, the new Brawl Breaker does have higher damage output and some really nice perks like 25% concentration damage, but I gotta be honest with you guys, the 8% instant adhesive chance just drives me crazy. I don't find adhesive very useful and there's nothing more frustrating than having it overwrite a brittle state you just built up, so I still prefer the Blast Forge. As for coils, I use 3 close range and 2 impact damage. Of course, all close range or all long range coils would be optimal for maximum damage, but I like having the versatility of regular impact damage coils which will work at any range. I typically use a bolt blaster at close range as opposed to long range, but if you're the opposite then you'll want to use long range coils. Just be warned that the maximum range of the bolt blaster's sustained burst weapon technique is only 40 meters, which isn't much further than the 30 meters you have to be at for the long range coils to kick in. If you tend to use regular shots with your bolt blaster, then long range coils make more sense because you'll have up to 60 meters meters of range with an overdrawn shot. If you like to use regular bursts more than the sustained burst weapon technique, then crit coils are also a good idea. But sustained burst won't hit crits, and that's my favorite way to use a bolt blaster, so crit coils aren't very helpful to me. You might also consider overdraw or concentration coils for their versatility. Up next, we have what's probably going to be a controversial pick, the spin thorn spike thrower. I know, a blue weapon? Yes. And here's why. I personally really like leveraging knockdowns in combat, and drill spikes are the best ammo for building up knockdown damage. Now sadly, neither the original legendary spike thrower the Sky Killer or the new Defiance have drill spikes. The purple Vindicator does, but its drill spikes actually don't have quite as much knockdown power as the Spinthorn. The Spinthorn has a built-in 25% knockdown power perk, so combined with two 15% knockdown power coils, we get a total of 55% extra knockdown power, compared to the Vindicator's max of 45%. Now I don't use a spike thrower for 
for anything except knockdowns, so this works really well for me. However, I realize this is kind of an uncommon playstyle, so instead of the Spinthorn, I'd recommend most players use this slot for the Elite Ropecaster. The Ropecaster will let you immobilize machines much more easily and for much longer than Drill Spike knockdowns. I do actually swap in my Elite Ropecaster in certain situations, like frustrating fights with groups of enemies so I can tie them down and deal with them one at a time. For the Ropecaster, I coil it with two reload and one draw speed coil because I tend to leverage the quick draw mechanic to draw my shots faster while sliding. If you want to learn more about quick draw, I'll link my secret combat mechanics video down below, but if you're not comfortable with this yet, then I would recommend using all draw speed coils. Next, we have my favorite weapon, the Ancestor's Return Shredder Gauntlet. I honestly think the AR is one of the most valuable and versatile weapons in the game. The Acid and Shock Shredders in particular deal a lot of tear damage, and the Shock ones are excellent for repeatedly shocking machines into a stun state, allowing you to tear off a specific component or line up a powerful shot on a weak spot. Shredders are also surprisingly good for dealing with rebels, especially if you can hit them in the head, and they're resource efficient because of the catch and throw mechanic as well as the cheap crafting cost of the elemental shredders. If you're looking for some tips on how to use shredder gauntlets, I'll link my masterclass video down in the description. For the coils on my AR, I use 4 agility and that coveted 15% concentration coil. Every time I throw a shredder, I try to either jump or slide to leverage the agility coils and trigger concentration to get a boost from the concentration coil. The blue versions of these work well if you don't have a full set of purples yet, and I think the optimal coil set would be all 15% concentration, but that's going to take me a few more new game plus playthroughs to get. Impact damage, damage over time, shocked enemy, and corroding enemy coils are also decent options for shredders. In my final weapon slot, I have the new legendary sharp shot bow, Ear of's Downfall, which I like way more than the Forge Fall. I don't find plasma particularly useful on ultra hard, so the two plasma ammo slots on the Forge Fall are basically a waste to me. Ear of's Downfall, on the other hand, brings us some legendary class tear precision arrows instead, and the new elite precision arrows are pretty cool too. On my first couple playthroughs before New Game Plus, I wasn't big on sharp shot bows, but I find the high damage output really useful on ultra hard where machines have a ton of health. So Ear of's Downfall along with the Blast Forge are my two high DPS weapons. As for my coils, I know this is going to surprise a lot of you, but I honestly just loaded up with critical hit chance coils. Now, hear me out on this. Sharp shot bows have a critical hit damage multiplier of 2.5 which is equivalent to a 150% boost. That's the same as 6 25% long range coils and you can only equip 5 on a legendary weapon. So when you hit a crit with your sharp shot bow, you're actually doing more damage than if you were using long range or any other 25% coil. Now of course you won't hit a crit every time, but with the 5 15% coils and the bow's inherent 5% chance, that's a total of an 80% chance to land a critical hit with every shot. And that's a high damage shot at any range in any situation. You don't have to be in stealth or further than 30 meters or anything specific like that. You just get a straight up 150% boost on 4 out of every 5 shots. If you really want to dig into the math, you can multiply the 150% boost by the 80% chance to get the average damage increase, which works out to 120%. That's just 5% shy of using any combination of 5 25% coils. Now yes, if you happen to get lucky and hit a crit while using all 25% coils, you'll hit a higher damage shot but you only have a 5% chance of that happening. Personally, I'll take the consistency and versatility of the crit build any day. Not to mention, Ear of Downfall has a 25% critical hit damage perk, which brings the average damage boost up to 140%. So on Ear of Downfall, the crit build is even better. Now, if I haven't convinced you that crit chance coils are the way to go with your sharp shot bow, then using some combination of the 25% stealth, high ground, long, and close range coils is a good idea, with a specific combination depending on how you like to play. I'd recommend prioritizing the long range coils and then stealth to fill in any remaining slots, since these tend to fit the way most people use a sharp shot bow. If you do do want to try the crit chance coil set but you don't have 5 15% coils yet, then load up as many 15% coils as you have and fill in the rest with 25% long range and stealth coils for now. So that's my new game plus ultra hard weapon wheel. The Sun Scourge, Tears of the Land God, Blast Forge, Spin Thorn, Ancestor's Return, and Ear of's Downfall, with the Elite Ropecaster swapped in for the Spin Thorn once in a while. Now let's quickly cover some alternatives if this doesn't quite fit your playstyle and then we'll discuss outfits and weaves. If you're into shredders like me, then you might want to consider adding the final chapter to your loadout. Lately I've been experimenting with swapping out either my TLG, Blast Forge, Spin Thorn, or Ear of's Downfall to make room for the final chapter. I'm not settled on which one of these I want to let go of yet, or even if the final chapter will earn a permanent spot on my weapon wheel, but it is a lot of fun using it for dealing damage. I'd recommend the same coils for the final chapter as the Ancestor's Return, with agility and concentration being my top picks. Although, if you're using both shredders, then you'll need to make do with some blue coils unless you've done a few New Game Plus playthroughs. 
If you're not into shredders, then you're going to need a good shock weapon in place of the Ancestor's Return, and there's none better than the Deathseeker's Shadow. With the TLG taking its place for dealing tear damage, it's an excellent idea to repurpose the DSS as a pure shock bow coiled with all shock coils. Another great weapon for dealing damage is one of the legendary spike throwers. My pick would be Defiance if you're going for maximum explosive damage. Just load it up with explosive damage coils and go to town. Overdraw and concentration coils are also good options for a spike thrower. If you like using warrior bows, I feel the Reign of Sparks is slightly better than the Karja's Bane, specifically because of its critical hit chance and damage perks. I'd recommend boosting those stats further with critical hit chance and damage coils. Now, for my outfit, I pretty much exclusively use the Nora Thunder Warrior because I really like its perks for concentration and stamina. For the weaves, I stick with the default weapon stamina plus weave, but I swap out the Valor Surge Master Weave for the low health ranged weave from the Nora Valiant. I find I build up Valor plenty fast without the weave, and I like having the option to play a bit of a low health build sometimes. If you want a true low health build, which can be very strong, then I suggest the Tanakh Vanquisher with the Stamina Regen Weave from the Utaru Gravesinger, and the Weapon Stamina Plus Weave from the Nora Thunder Warrior. If you're wondering where to get all the weaves and coils we've covered, I'll link my video on all their locations down below. And I'll also link some awesome resources a few members of my Discord community put together to guide you through farming coils in New Game Plus to build your perfect coil sets. Huge props to DF Chang aka Shadowfall for putting that guide together on Reddit, and Blues Clues for making a PDF version of the guide that you can download. And I'll link my original video comparing all the New Game Plus legendaries to the originals in case you want to check that out and access the upgrade resource spreadsheet. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.